right, so please welcome uh, a gentleman we've already seen already, marketing expert at Sold Out NFTs, Arvind Kamse. Arvind, come and join us. CEO at Folks Finance, Benedetto Biondi. Are you here? Right, we were waiting for you over there. I'm glad you are here. Please take a seat. Founder at Farm M X Y Z, who's just gone. He's just again, just gone all the way round, sitting there, ready to come on. I like your, I like your consistency. Yeah, it's almost like you want someone. You walk round because you like people to see you walk round. <laughs> there we are. Exit chair Alex Linku. There we are. And CEO and founder of Telepath.com, Sebastian. Kokinescu, again back on stage, on this side of the stage, take a seat, wherever you wish to, handshake, there we are, take a seat. And the person already we've seen already moderating a great panel earlier on, let's do exactly the same thing right now. Technology advisor at Helen's Rock, Ioana and Alexandra Finkel. Okay, Iona, unfortunately, she's not here right now. Uh, if she does come, she'll join the panel. In the meantime, Alex is going to take over as moderator. Let's start, first of all, with defining what DeFi is. A few words. I'll start then. Um, DeFi is a way of making quick money, so... Uh, <laughs> Who disagrees, by the way? No, so yeah, it, it, it's an alternative to centralized finance, uh, and you, we've all seen last week what happened with Silicon Valley Bank, and why decentralized finance may be a viable and better solution to old finance. So it's a way of taking control of your money, that would be one thing, but that's for crypto in general, and for, for the blockchain space. Uh, but DeFi also refers to automatic and programmatic transactions that may or may not lead to a steady income for some. I mean, it's pretty, pretty comprehensive, uh, and um, I would also just say, you know, it's, we used to say DeFi is better, but lately it's kind of like I think Elon Musk just tweeted recently as well. It's like uh, you want to say crypto is better, but now it's like we don't know if crypto is better, or uh, we don't like, we don't know if DeFi is better, or just even the Decentralized. So both of them are kind of in a. We've had we've had some challenges with both. Um, so I guess we we don't. I used to say I used to say DeFi is the is the way to go and everything about that too. But now it's more like it's both of them that we need to just pay attention to, and then we just need to figure out like where where we really like we need to actually study it deeper than than just say hey, DeFi is the best way for everything. Yeah, go with us. Decentralized finance is uh, a new financial system powered by blockchain and smart contracts that allow uh, new financial tools or importing the existing one from traditional finance, but those are permissionless, interoperable, and unstoppable. Okay, so uh, yeah, we're rebuilding the financial system using smart contracts and blockchains. Uh, what do you guys see as the really cool new use cases that showed up in DeFi in the last few months or years. I'd have to say liquid staking and the way that programmatic money work. Uh, I think also um, a nice thing to see, although it's coming from the ashes of FTX, it would be the um, programmatic stable coins. Uh, and these two, yeah, would be fun. Stable coins like USDC, US, USDT, or no programmatic, like it was uh, Luna. Oh, okay. Supposed to, know supposed to be programmatic stable coins. Did it fail? It didn't work out. However, I hope there's going to be a new. I remember I was at uh, Berkeley uh, Crypto Economic Security Forum back in 2017 uh, when these guys from Terra. Okay, Terra, Luna, 
something new, or I've seen the white paper, it was something very exciting, because it was in the academia world at least, very exciting. Then, of course, later on we all know what happened, but still I think it's very exciting, and someone will crack this code at some point. I think... <laughs> yeah, um, for me, uh, right now we, we have built the infrastructure for what will be actually more exciting coming in the next year. It's actually happening already. Uh, for me, it's pretty obvious that right now DeFi is just running behind incentives for most of us because it's all related to crypto. But the real excitement for me and innovation is when actually real world assets can come into the game and when actual institutions will be able to play a role there, which can be intermediary, okay. But uh, as for now, I'm not convincing my father to join DeFi, so for me, it's still not enough. And uh, when my father will be able to do that and will be interested to do that, that's where will be the real innovation. And for example, it can be when he will be able to use as a collateral on a lending protocol, a piece of his land, or something else that he owns in the real world. Okay, so uh, I think on the next point, because we touched on Luna, um, and I uh, recently was on a talk about GMX and how you actually hedge risk when you invest in a platform like this. Uh, how do you guys see the risks and what should people think about when actually investing in a DeFi platform from a risk point of view? Well, it's very risky. I say it from my own experience. Uh, and also from the uh, theoretical background. So uh, how many of you here, I would like to know, so please raise your hands, used to invest in derivatives? So it's four people out of 300. Okay, now these four should be allowed to invest in DeFi. Otherwise, you are gambling. And I really mean what I say, and I'm sorry it's not a popular thing to say. However, DeFi, if you don't understand what you're doing there, you're probably gonna lose money. Uh, and uh, yeah, sometimes you win, but it's just gambling. So if you invested in derivatives and you know how they work and you know that there's a trillion dollar, uh, let's say, tornado coming across the fiat world because of these derivatives, then you may infer that the crypto space would not be so safe. But enough with the bad stuff. The good stuff is that the crypto and actually, actually the decentralized finance may solve some of the greed and the problems that are existing in the centralized world. Yeah, um, I mean, as a founder, I know very well the risks of, of DeFi, of especially it's a software, so obviously a software can have a bug. So we all know the risk of building smart contracts. Uh, nevertheless, this is getting better and better over time because uh, if you think about it, a uh, code that is, that is actually uh, transparent and can be read and hackable, if stays uh, alive without being hacked for a long time, then it gets to be more reliable. So this risk is partially being mitigated by having uh, sound contracts that are not being hacked for a long time. Um, one of the risks is also obviously uh, the human error. Uh, and uh, sometimes it's not always from bad actors, in my opinion. Um, I think that one of the main problem of this industry is bull markets, because when we are in a bull markets, as a fund that I'm talking about, you are pushed from investor and from everyone else to do fast, to, to go live on the market, because it's bull markets and you need to make money, and if you don't do now, then you are going to lose traction. So um, this industry is heavily impacted by this pressure, and that's not healthy. That's why I think that projects that build in a beer market, actually they are kind of better because they don't build under the pressure of uh, you know, the, the market time. And um, then uh, I also believe that during those times, the projects that you build are actually the ones that are going to stay for the long. Uh, because if you are able, as a founder, to, to keep your resources, use it at the best, and then build a good product that has a market fit and generates revenue, not because you are in a bull market, but just because it's a good product. And uh, then uh, definitely the risk of human error is reduced. And uh, also in my opinion, uh, a very big problem in DeFi is economic exploits. 
Um, it's uh, we have seen it in the last year also. This has happened, uh, and um, it, this is actually even more uh, difficult to predict because uh, even though you can simulate uh, numbers and uh, um, there are just so many points of attack that you can have even uh, uh, leveraging another protocol then to attack another one and because DeFi is composable and inter interoperable this is actually uh, very tricky to, to predict uh, so that's for me what are the risks thing. yeah I, I would add to that uh, looking at what you're actually investing and uh, what the platform is doing, just to take GMX as an example, when you're investing in a GMX pool, you're actually taking the other side on all of the bets on the GMX platform, right? So if those guys win, your value goes down. Uh, and what the big investors do is actually monitor the, uh, what the bets on the platform are and see if they can hedge that by buying different other uh, assets, right? Um, but that's not something that the average user can do. Uh, do you guys have any good suggestions on what the average users can actually uh, invest in and where should they uh, limit themselves? Of course, the logic, the common sense says that don't invest something that you're not prepared to lose. Of course, and I just want to point out that yesterday there was there were another two hundred million dollars stolen from a DeFi, DeFi provider, and the funny thing is that they uh, tweeted that they are working with law enforcement to recover some of those funds, and it strikes me odd as. A DeFi platform, decentralized, going to the police. Hey, they lost, they stole my money. Uh, yeah, it's it's paradoxical. It However, is still hacking and theft. Uh, sure, it is, and I hope it's a. Uh, we're not going to see a world without uh, some form of protection from someone. However, uh, it's odd that that the DeFi platform screams. Hey, police, we, we don't want to have anything to do with centralized banks or these bad guys and states and police and everything. However, when we lose money, please, please help us. It was a bit hypocritical. However, um, your question was what should we tell people to, to invest their money? I, I think no one should, uh, should look at someone for advice when it comes to their own personal finances. And educate yourself and understand the risks, lose some money first, and then maybe you are prepared to make some money. Yeah, I mean, there's a, just going off that, I actually agree, like, so we, we do make fun of, of you know, of uh, all these centralized systems. First of all, we don't actually have a decentralized system. Like, all we got, it's just going in that direction. But also, um, it's, yeah, it's funny, like, how we'll just go back to the same, people were making fun of but um i uh yeah i just i i would just say you know there's a there's like a saying in like in the, in the crypto world like if you haven't lost a few hundred k um you haven't been there long enough um and so yeah it's just it's just i would say not 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 i'm not saying i'm not suggesting people should go lose money to, un to understand how to invest but i'm just saying like there's definitely that risk exists right so whatever they do is just is still still going to be the, the turn and I actually have lost I'm, I'm still positive but I actually have lost beyond the cake in the in investing in the site I think uh, that this risk that you just mentioned when someone is monitoring and then take advantage of some position or whether uh, it's pretty normal also in traditional finance and also in centralized exchange uh, so uh, well we have the same on the five okay uh, it's uh, not that the, the worst, honestly. Uh, but in my opinion, when uh, looking where to invest, uh, definitely for me, one uh, red flag is to buy um, APR or you know, incentive proposed. That's something that uh, definitely is never sustainable for long term. Um, as for me, I never did that, for example, a lot of due diligence on Terra Luna, but seeing this APR, as a founder, and I know how APR works on DeFi, because if you get this APR, you are taking it from somewhere. 
and uh, you know this is never sounded to me uh, bulletproof and uh, uh, long-standing. Um, so uh, definitely do your own research. Uh, try to look at the protocol, how transparent they are, how well they are uh, uh, positioned in the community, how much they are. Uh, open to talk and you know like if a founder is present on a conference and is not hiding somewhere uh, that's definitely not that and um, as well I would say never use something where your stake is too large compared to the total stake so yeah that's what I would say. I would add here something that there are two ways of thinking about uh, gain, gains or losses so let's say uh, in a, at the top in crypto, you had 100k, let's say, on uh, one asset, and then um, you haven't sold your hotel, and then now you have 10k instead of 100. Did you lose 90k or not? Well, you didn't because you haven't sold yet, and hopefully at some point that coin or that thing will get you back to 100 or more, right? So that's not a loss. That's just a way of coping with something with regret that you haven't sold when it was high. And that's only if you're focused on fiat, which most people are. However, the second way of thinking about loss or gain is that if you had one Bitcoin on the top and now you still have one Bitcoin because you hodl, then you're at the same level, you haven't lost anything and you shouldn't regret anything. So I guess the deeper question is, are you in it for the tech for the libertarianism, for decentralization, transparency, and so on? Or are you in it for a big bug in fiat, by the way? So be honest <laughs> to yourself, in general. Yeah, also just a different angle of things. So I, uh, I talk to a lot of VCs about you know, their, their strategies of investing, and then when they, there's any projects like DeFi or anything else. And then um, it's a, uh, it's, it's not a great thing, but they have certain factors where, you know, projects have to have a specific, like let's say, community size. Let's say on different social media platforms, like I don't know, Twitter, um, different platforms, um, just to be even like looked at, right? So then that actually pushes people, the founders, um, into coming up with really weird ways to actually show those numbers so they can get in, and then. And then as a, I guess, I suppose all of us, as a consumer side of thing, when we want to invest, or retail investor, let's say, then um, I think us just being educated on like what it looks like for a community, like what a solid, healthy community looks like versus like what, what, um, what just the numbers show. Um, I suppose that, just all those little things, right? That's just like one factor, but um, all just li little things for the people to actually look at and just being able to go a little bit deeper than just saying, oh, okay, so there's a community behind this specific project, therefore it must be a good thing, um, or there's a lot of conversations around it, right? So like people actually understanding what it goes on to, um, I don't know, let's say get, getting verified on a, on Twitter, right? Having gold check, gold check, like things like that. There's, there, there, there are a lot of things that, a lot of, or like being like, Going into publications, being like diff all these different things, like people uh, in like I guess the masses don't know how this happens. So if people just had a, maybe slightly more knowledge into what it goes on into actually creating these things, then they would have to be able to I guess they would be able to make better decisions. Yeah, I'll, I have to agree with that, and I was uh, just thinking about in DeFi in general. People should also look at what their earnings are in, right? Because you are investing some tokens and then you're receiving some other tokens that can be just a jump token, right? So you're having a 2,000% APY now that will get to be 0.01% down the line. Um, and you should generally do the math and start learning about how all of those uh, systems actually work and what you're actually learning. Um, just to... Um, any other uh, good tips on the whole defining this? Well, I will touch on your idea on uh, APR and API, so 
I've seen a project uh, that offers locked API for two years for 100%, let's say. And I have to think, I have to think about really what or where do they get that? How can they guarantee some, something that not even the central banks of uh, any, other, any country name it, can, can provide? So, uh, on the other hand, you have um, store of value, such as Bitcoin, which seems to be one of the best performing assets that I have in my portfolio, for instance. And some of the uh, safest assets that were considered safe are not so safe anymore, uh, looking at treasury bonds and so on. So, um, my tip, let's say, not financial advice, right, but my tip would be uh, if you hear about a protocol or, or um, some sort of making quick money out of this new, brave new world uh, of crypto, be mindful that if everybody talks about it, you're probably too late. And if it sounds too good to be true, it's probably because it's, it's, it's not. So listen to your own uh, common sense and logic and the voice behind your head that says don't, 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 don't go into a casino because most likely the house will win. Unless you're a gambler, which is totally fine and you're okay with losing a lot of money. I think that, that is the exact same reason that uh, I uh, didn't get burned with Luna. Because just like you, I looked at it and I was like, how the hell are they giving out this amount of uh, uh, you are working. yield? It's like, that, that doesn't make any sense. This will fail whatever they do. It uh, must be a Ponzi scheme. Um, and yes, getting into Ponzi schemes. I think DeFi had its bunch of Ponzi schemes uh, projects. Still has uh, And it still has them, yes. Uh, Drip and uh, so on and a bunch of others. Um, how do you guys look at uh, doing due diligence on a project and looking at how that yield is actually generated? For example, how do you compare uh, GMX right, to maybe uh, pancake swap to maybe a drape or whatever junk? My due diligence process is quite easy and straightforward. There's no rocket science behind it. So one is the component of, let's say, common sense and marketing. I look at the website, who's on the about page. If there's no one there, we have a problem. If there's someone that has a LinkedIn profile created two weeks ago, again, we have a problem. If there's no common connection, we have a problem because I'm for a few years now in, in this space all over the world and there should be at least some connections that I can ask directly, not just add, add, add. So that's the, the social side of things. I want to see who's people. Do they have a name? Do they have a face? Do they assume this role? If there's something anonymous, which is okay, Satoshi Nakamoto is one example, it's okay to be anonymous. However, it should be at the size of people. Uh, and the second layer would be the technical one, where I would uh, carefully look upon their um, smart contracts, uh, GitHub repositories, and see how many people, how many uh, uh, people work on this, how often, and uh, how many commits they have, what's going on behind the scenes, and then I would go a bit deeper into what's actually happening in the in the code, and then decide if I'm going to go for further or not. Okay, and just uh, how do you guys look at how the project is generating the yield? Right. Well, uh, this is usually uh, uh, transparent in the documentation, so you know, at least for us we make it very clear so that the end user can read easily and understand it. So if this isn't, I'm not going to use it, and uh, honestly for me I just use what's really needed. I'm not an eager uh, uh, researcher for uh, Vision EBY, I don't really care. I, I think that's the problem of this industry right now, that everyone tries to push this because the TBL grows only if you have uh, this big EBY and they less concentrate on building a good product that actually gives utilities. So for example, 
I can tell that in our lending protocol we don't have any type of incentives. The APR are pretty low, but people use it because it's useful and it's easy to use. So I will look more at these things. Okay, uh, any questions from the audience? Just pop up your hand and we'll come around with a microphone. Any questions at all? Or comments or, or would you like to challenge one of our one of our panelists? No. no. Is that is that no nothing at all? Nobody at all. No. Oh, there's a gentleman there. Hold on. this in fiat. The, my problem with this is that uh, when I feel the loss. Why? Because I feel the opportunity. I, I, um, I lose the opportunity, for example, of um, if I need to take a brain surgery, which will cost 100,000 euros, and they charge in fiat and they don't accept uh, Bitcoin, I have only 10% for this and I can uh, wait three more years to the Bitcoin to do you have a solution or do you think how uh, um, quickly will come into the market services which will be constant in value in terms of Bitcoin or another crypto? Thank you, that's a great question and a great example and I think we can all relate to that. So it's it's a very straightforward answer. If you have your house just bought and you paid 100,000 euros for your house and you have to have your brain surgery. Would you sell half of your house to do it? Probably yes, but it's going to be very tough because you have to leave somewhere. So you have to think about an investment in crypto as a store of value or as an asset that is very quickly to get out of and to, to invest again. So if you think in terms of the first as your house, you had your well on something that is just a store of value then forget about it you don't care if, if it goes up or down and up or down you just pass it along to your children however your question i think it was related to liquidity and how can you think about this and it's easy it, it, it's an easy answer in the invest, investment world you just put a piece of your portfolio into that and then you go to safer bets with all of your portfolio. However, we don't even know what's safe today, so I wouldn't know what to say. Yeah, I, I just add to that, I, uh, yeah, that I, just exactly like what, I guess what you said, but also just like maybe just thinking about it as you know that house or brain surgery money shouldn't be in your wallet in crypto. You know what I mean? So it's like the, the investment we're talking about. We're, so, you know, if there are people 10%, 20%, like they're going out of all their money that they're making, they're putting it into their portfolio. We're not talking the other way. Like the, the entire wealth is in um, crypto and then they're, they, they're trying to figure out like what to do with their, you know, with the actual expenses that they have. But, but what you were saying also makes sense though. Like, so there are people, they, they've made money that they want to use it. Maybe they weren't able to in the past because of crypto now they can. So that's an issue, right? So, so I get what you're saying as well. Okay, any other questions before we finish? Oh, they're all coming now, you see. After, after the, there are probably another 10 people and we've run out of time. Here we go. Okay, so uh, this is a pretty open-ended open question, but I'm, I'm uh, curious what you think about it. So we all, we all know what a Ponzi scheme is, Ponzi scheme is, right? Uh, the old guys who came in uh, at the very beginning are profiting from the newcomers at the very end, right? Uh, what's the difference between that and someone who's investing early, let's say in a bear market in like something like Bitcoin and selling at the top to the people coming in, possibly new in the whole sphere in, on the, uh, at the peak of the bull market? So it's a pretty open-ended question, but what's the difference between one and the other? Because one's bad and the other is just, I don't know, trading. But essentially it's the same thing, right? I mean, 
I, yeah, I, I just agree in a sense that like you know the the words Ponzi scheme, scam, a lot of these words they just get thrown around in this industry way too much. No one knows what they actually mean like by that. So and also just confuses people too. And then also I think it also is is a uh, detrimental in a sense that it actually normalizes it too. So like everything is Ponzi scheme and then everything is a scam, then it's just like it's okay. Right, where like it's actually not like I think uh, there's a panelist in the uh, before before us was talking about the gentleman was talking about how you know there's like a business flaws and then people immediately call it a scam. Um, and it's not, it's just business flaws and there's a lot of business flaws and also like just like it's startups too, like ninety percent of them vanish. Um, and it's okay, right? But um, so so there's uh, there's the there's a de it's, it comes to a definition, so you, you you're right. So some might say that uh, the biggest Ponzi scheme of all is the fiat system. You may agree, you may disagree to it. Some might say that crypto is the biggest. I would say that it's not the biggest. It's most of it might be might be uh, a scam. However, uh, if we go deeper to answer your question, is whether you're late or early. I think that was the underlying question, not what if it's a. It, there's a lot of shady things going on there. So um, if, if something is promising for the last 14 years to change the world, uh, I think we should focus on that. If you want to make a quick buck, there are a lot of ways to do it. You can just create an app with OpenAI and make a quick buck by creating a university for ChatGPT. And you're going to make, there's someone on Twitter that just asked ChatGPT, how can I make $100 a day? And now they're doing a lot more just by following step by step what, what ChatGPT is, is telling them. So if you want to make quick money, I think switch to AI. As, as Elon Musk said, I used to be in crypto, now I'm into AI. And, and I would add to that that in a couple of years you're going to be into two things, into uh, genetics and uh, going to Mars, probably, or space. Uh, so, yeah, if you don't follow the trend because it's a trend that you don't want to make quick money, and if you're in it for the philosophy behind it or the, the potential of changing the world, then you shouldn't really care if you lose some money. Okay, uh, unfortunately, we run out of time. <laughs> Do we have time for one more question? <laughs> No. Right, oh, there we are. Ladies and gentlemen, hands together for our panelists and uh, our step in moderator. Thank you so much. Fantastic.